the presence of a quorum, we'd like to call the meeting of the Amherst School Committee to order at 6.02 p.m. Welcome, everyone. Uh, we have a short meeting on the agenda tonight, only one actual uh, item of substance. And I trust all of you have had a chance to take a look at the materials that were uh, sent around much earlier. And uh, we'll have a good and lively discussion on this. Uh, but first, I wanted to take a moment uh, to have direct the committee's attention to the minutes of February 26th and March 7th. And I will take a motion for uh, both of those minutes. Mr. Nakajima? I move the approval of, of the minutes of February 26, 2019. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Mr. Demling, thank you. Give me a moment to Ms. McDonald. Um, I just noticed on the um, bottom of the first page of the <coughs> March 7th, um, it said, um, it says Ms. Spitzer was able to attend and thanked Ms. Ardonis and Ms. Spitzer. For <laughs> I noticed that, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank yourself. <laughs> that should read Ms. McDonald. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any other edits? I only I only moved the 26th because I was on the 7th, so I want to be able to vote abstention. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said both dates. No, I, okay. just, I just said I the first date. I must have blanked out on that. Okay. okay. So we will hold that comment. Um, so we have a, a motion and a second for February 26th. Any comments or questions or edits for that? If not, all those in favor? Thank you. It is unanimous. All right, now, Mr. Nahajima, do you want to do the honors? Not really. <laughs> I'm, going to move, I'm going to vote abstention on that. I guess I could. You could I move the approval of the minutes from March 7, 2019. <laughs> do I have a second? Second. So, Thank you, Ms. McDonald. We have one edit. you want to restate that for the record? Sure. <laughs> on the, um, at the bottom of the first page, um, the... Sentence should read, Ms. Spitzer was able to attend two sessions and thank Ms. Ordonez and Ms. McDonald. Thank you. <coughs> Any other uh, uh, edits or comments? Okay, all those in favor? Any uh, nays? Any abstentions? Mr. Nakajima, one abstention. Thank you very much. Okay, the next item on the agenda is committee announcements. Are there any announcements from the committee tonight? Mr. Dumling? Just wanted to remind all parents who may have received the special education survey that that is uh, still open. I believe the deadline is March 22nd. Um, so you can find it in your email. There may also be a link on our website. I'm looking at Dr. Morris and he is nodding, so yes. <laughs> you can also find that. It's very important for us to get feedback, um, uh, even, even at a, a moderate volume, getting very individualized uh, feedback is, is tremendous help to the staff and administrators. So, uh, you have until March 22nd for that. Great, thank you. Well, Just Morris. something that will be emailed around. I don't think it was yet, but um, we're invited via Amherst College. We, the community, not we, the people here. Um, next Tuesday, which is March 19th, uh, at 4.30 at the Bernaski Museum building, which is at Amherst College, um, Dr. Roberto Gonzalez is coming to speak, and he is a professor of education at Harvard and an expert on um, immigration and particularly on um, undocumented uh, folks who are here. This <coughs> talk is entitled Lives Still in Limbo. It's hard to say this, it's better to read it, but Undocumented uh, and Navigating Uncertain Futures. Um, so conveniently placed right before an Amherst school committee meeting. So if you're looking for an extra hour, and a, you got an hour and a half before uh, the Amherst meeting. But, uh, you know, from what I heard from my contact and uh, I was working on the education programming at Amherst College, she's an incredibly impressive speaker and does work that I think is very consistent with things that have been talked about at this table. Can you mind so, date time? Yep, so it's March 19th, uh, 4.30 p.m. And the Bernaski Museum is the one that for people with young kids, has the dinosaurs in it. So um, might be a different way to say it, but that'll also be shared around by email. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you, Dr. Morris. Thanks. Okay, uh, moving on to public comment. If anyone <coughs> has a comment they would like to make, um, you can come up to the mic. Please introduce yourself, and you have three minutes. Good evening. I'm Jean Fay, president of the Amherst Pelham Education Association, and I wanted to start by first thanking the school committee for the responsiveness to the concerns of the educators in Amherst around the conditions of the building. Um, 
thank you from the bottom of our hearts uh, and for all the work that you've put in on this whole process. Uh, but I also want to go on record as stating that the educators in Amherst are committed to having safe and healthy schools for the students and the staff, and it is becoming increasingly obvious that that cannot be accomplished with the buildings in the state that they are in presently. So we are united in the feeling that we need to do something. The situation is dire, and we're hopeful that the MSBA process will continue and that there will be a positive outcome to this. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? I'm Jenny Hamilton. I'm a Crocker Farm parent and wanted to come before it got lost in this quick moving shuffle to just say thank you for um, all of your work around the listening sessions for the SOI. Um, one of the refrains I heard a lot about the past project is that people didn't feel listened to. So this format and the facilitated small groups where townspeople got to speak and share and decision makers listened was a really good step forward. So I wanted to say thank you for that. Um, I'm sure you'll hear plenty of constructive criticism about the process. We're really good at that in this town. Um, and it's useful because we can always look at what we can do better. But I also think it's valuable to look at what we do well and what worked so that we can continue to use the things that were well received. Um, I think that's just as important. Um, so I attended the first listening session and my small group included other parents of schools, uh, school children like me, um, some retirees including a retired teacher um, and a current school employee. And um, I heard from people on all sides of the previous project that um, people were speaking in support of the compromise proposal you all have put together. Um, I also heard many, many, many questions, and I do trust that what was shared and what was captured by the facilitators will be useful information that um, we can address as we move forward into the, the feasibility and planning process down the road. Um, but in my own circles, I heard this refrain um, over and over. Lots of good questions, lots of varied perspectives, and near unanimous support for the compromise proposal. And I printed this out because a friend uh, messaged me uh, and I just thought it was so useful. He said, I was surprised to be reminded how different the dynamics of such a small group discussion are from larger public meetings which have dominated the political scene for so long. Lots of good comments. So I wanted to thank you for the significant effort that you all put in in a short period of time to pull this off. Thank you. Okay, um, seeing no other members of the public <laughs> to pose public comments, uh, thank you to those of you who were able to come tonight. So um, the next item on the agenda is new and continuing business, uh, MSBA statement of interest vote. And of course, this is what we've been leading up to now for a couple of months now. Three months. Um, three months, that's right. And uh, I will say that this has been a uh, very, I think, informative and um, sometimes challenging process, <laughs> um, but with really good participation. I think as another community, community member just stated uh, earlier this evening, um, for the most part, we have heard a lot of positive feedback from, from uh, folks who have attended the listening sessions, also emails, one-on-one uh, -on -one conversations that I'm sure all of us have actually participated in at one point or another. Um, but we've had a lot of meetings on this topic, and so we're here tonight primarily, I think, to, uh, you know, if there's any remaining questions or issues uh, that we want to address to the superintendent, uh, we can do so tonight. We've had a chance to review the draft SOI as a statement of interest for, to the MSBA which are the actual documents that we'll be voting tonight. In addition to uh, the principles that were shared uh, by Dr. Morris earlier this year around a proposal for these applications. And so ultimately I'm hoping that the committee will be voting tonight. Um, I want to remind us that this is a very short agenda and it was done so <laughs> deliberately because we've had so many meetings already where we've had you know, a lot of conversation around this. So I'm hopeful that we can be decisive and move forward uh, with a vote tonight. Um, but if not, then we would be uh, prepared to have another meeting later this week um, of this committee so that we could continue the conversations and discussions. And of course, we're marching towards a vote uh, at the town council that who will also have to review these applications and our votes 
uh, in order to make it their own decision. But before I turn it over to the committee, Dr. Morris, is there anything else that you want to you want to say or? Yeah, I have five sort of quick items. Um, I'm conscious of the chair's, uh, you know, comment at the beginning about the length of the meeting. But um, so I just want to first of all thank uh, Mr. Roy Clark, who's here with us. Um, he's here if there's any technical questions that um, he can jump in. He took you know, prior SOIs and I think um, significantly improved them in terms of the level of detail, the level of documentation, and the ease of reading, like embedding hyperlinks in the document. Um, so thank you. One thing to note is that what end up what's in front of you tonight is uh, a PDF printout of an MSPA, um, I don't know how to describe it, but kind of interface. So it, the, some of the spacing looks funny, and that's because the printout isn't actually what goes to MSBA. It's an electronic submission. And like many electronic submissions, when you try to make them papers, they look a little funky. So I just want to acknowledge that point, and a couple of people had raised it. Uh, but thank you for your work, and thank you for being here. Um, the second point is I had a conversation with the MSBA on Friday, and there was kind of two, two things I want to share. One is I just updated them on the progress um, in terms of engagement and community engagement so that they were aware of, uh, you know, they were aware of what was being proposed uh, by me and then brought to the committee, but they were updated on where we were about the listening sessions because I, I want to, uh, I'm trying to keep them in the loop on every kind of major thing that's happening so there's no surprises. Um, I also talked to them about the process moving forward. So if we were fortunate enough to have positive votes, uh, both this body and then the town council, and then fortunate enough to get in the MSBA process, uh, one of the questions I heard in the listening session was, you know, what does that mean once we actually get in? You know, so we'll have this kind of recommended 600 student write those five, um, five kind of um, statements. And uh, they explained that once we're in, that they're appreciative we're going forward, we're appreciative we're building consensus, and what we're short, once we're in, we have the same, um, we don't get out of some of the other parts of the MSBA process. We still have to make sure we're exploring multiple options, uh, including looking at the specific building as is, that uh, yes, they want a consensus statement, they want us to have something to look at, uh, and they, want to, they wanted us to build that into uh, the deliberation that you have and the town council will have, but it's not that it absolves all the other kind of requirements of the MSPA process. So that was helpful, I thought, to just have clarity on that question. It came up multiple times at the sessions I was at. Um, my fourth thing is um, just the process moving forward. Uh, the chair referenced it, but I know for the town council, they're anticipating having discussion about this on their meeting a week from tonight, which is March 18th, and I think if things move forward, then the chair and I will <coughs> collaborate on um, sharing uh, our perspectives with the council. I was really Im impressed with how many counselors were at each of the listening sessions mm -hmm. as an aside. Um, try not to belabor my talking time tonight, but I, I think it's worth noting uh, I was really impressed with the attendance. And then potentially for them to vote on April 1st, which gives Mr. Roy Clark enough time to take that, you know, insert those little pieces in there and click the submit button to the MSPA well ahead of the <coughs> April 12th deadline. I think the last thing I want to say is. Um, I'm just kind of reflected in some of the chair's comments and public comment. Um, I think the listening sessions were a really useful uh, activity, um, and I, I heard lots of feedback uh, who were appreciative of the opportunity to just talk. And, you know, the presentation was pretty time, you know, it was length at 15 minutes. I added, you know, one, the ones I was at, two or three minutes of other content, and then really it was hearing from the community, and, and the big word on listening was, was not just in the title, it was actually indicative of what happened. And I think uh, things can always be improved, um, but I do think it's a model that we should, we ought to, or I, I plan to um, build on as if we're fortunate enough to move forward, that this, these kind of interactive dialogues are incredibly important and uh, mixing the kind of, if whether it's building committee or me and my role, uh, that we want to make sure that the committees, that the community is getting opportunities to offer feedback, feedback throughout, because something I've said consistently is, there's this um, item to get through in terms of the statement of interest. If we're fortunate enough to get in, there's going to be a slew of challenges along the way. And I think what we're building, in my opinion, is a, a template or a model that we can use to continue to engage the community. Um, and we got great feedback in the last question from the facilitator um, about what are better ways to continue to engage the community, which are varied. People have different levels of interest in clicking a button versus getting a, some information in another source. So. Um, I think just summarize just that, you know, the engagement piece that was started, it wasn't a start and end. It was actually, I'm viewing it as, it was getting the motor running and then we expand on that into the future. 
Those are all really good points, and um, I think you know one of the things again that we we have heard consistently is uh, the community expressing both appreciation for the listening sessions and for all the different methods that have been employed to solicit their input at this stage, uh, but also a request or in some ways a demand, I think, uh, an expectation rather for us to continue doing that in whatever process moves forward. And I couldn't agree with that more. I think that that's incredibly important. Um, and it, you know, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But before we get there, um, I just wanted to direct the committee's attention. So there are two motions for tonight. One is for uh, the Fort River application, and one is for the Wildwood application. So we'll have to move uh, both of these in order to approve or not the, the application. And the other thing that I wanted to draw the committee's attention to is the uh, you should have received in your packet electronically, but it hasn't been printed out just because of the sheer volume of paper, uh, the various uh, comments that came through from the uh, both the listening sessions that were gathered by the facilitator Bill Logue and his, um, his uh, colleague, Lorraine De La Corda. And these were shared with the committee on Friday afternoon. In addition, we also shared um, the feedback that came from the District 1 Neighborhood Association meeting on the 17th. Um, as well as the educator uh, comments that came through. And those, I apologize, came through a little later today. They should have been sent on Friday, but um, that was my oversight. I didn't realize that the packet had not uh, included those. So um, again, mindful of the, the agenda that we've got in front of us, um, I'm just going to open it up to the committee if there's any you know, specific questions or comments that you would like to make uh, before we move to vote on this. Mr. Nakajima? Yeah, I, I apologize to the committee for not being able to be here on, on last Thursday. So um, having read through the minutes and seen the discussion that you had, I just wanted to add a couple of my, my thoughts um, before we proceed. Um, and I'd, I'd gone to four out of the six sessions and, and read through, sent the Bill Logue, uh, the entire report that Mr. Logue presented to us, as well as the other comments. Um, so one, I mean, is I, we go if we travel back to December, um, I had expressed at that time what I considered to be a, a fairly strong conviction that we should proceed with an SOI for a single building that was obviously a proposal later fleshed out and, and changed from what I thought it was going to be from from by Dr. Morris, which is what we've been considering. Um, so to me, the initial decision of whether I would vote yes to move forward is, it hasn't changed. I haven't learned anything in the last few months that would make me change the conviction that we should, that I'm going to vote yes, and we should, I think we should vote yes to proceed with the SOI. I think the real critical question is whether we think, this is in my view, I'm just saying, speaking for myself, whether we think we made sufficient progress to garner a consensus in town, to think that, A, we could be successful in getting into the MSB process, and um, two, B, whether we think we've actually started to develop a consensus that would make it more likely the project would succeed in the end. And, you know, you've, you've all attended the sessions and you've read through the same things I did. Um, I would agree with what was said um, by uh, the chair, Dr. Morris, and by um, Mr. Logue that um, there was a really clear majority that was expressing support for moving forward, expressing support for um, the basic concept. And, and I think that uh, I think that's great, and I think it's really heartening to see people coming together. What also has occurred to me a lot over the last few days um, when thinking about the timing of this particular vote is that consensus isn't really a destination, it's a process. And so we've made a lot of progress, and we've probably made as much progress as I think we could have in the last um, three months. And um, I've said this before to you privately, but I'll say it publicly. I really appreciate the work of the chair, Ms. McDonald, in, in putting together the communications and outreach work, because I think it was just exactly what we needed. But the key point for me then is in my hopefulness in voting yes, but also in hoping that we get in and moving forward, is built on the idea that if we maintain a commitment uh, and obviously this is in some ways something that we're memorializing in the minutes, if we, depending on how we vote, um, for future school committees. That could include some or all or none of us, depending on, on what the future brings, is we're really recommending forward to the future school committees and to the superintendent 
that they pick up lessons learned from this process, pick up a commitment to um, community engagement at a, at, a, at a stepped way in the way we've been, the way that we were doing here um, at different time points in the decision making process that would uh, be involved in. And I think if we do that, I think we in fact have made a tremendous amount of progress towards building community consensus. And we'll see it through by doing it throughout that, that process. And so with that, I feel, I, feel, uh, I feel good about this. I feel very good about it. I recognize there are a lot of questions that are unanswered. I think for the public that's watching and listening, I, I would just say it was an, it'd be inevitable that we would have questions, whether it's on enrollment <coughs> and class sizes or whatever the heck it is, location, some of which we stated at the outset were undecided. We know there are unknowns. Um, we can manage them together. And I think we put a marker down of good faith that we're going to do it in the interest of the kids in, in, in partnership with the professional staff, the teachers and educators, um, and, but with the community. And if we do that, I think we can get it right and we can build a, a, a building that not only works for us, but we'll be proud of. And that's Thank you. all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I'm going to just go down the road here and I'll skip myself uh, for now, but um, just to see if there's any, you know, again, comments or uh, questions that you have um, about this process. Um, no, I think um, your comments, um, Mr. Nakajima, echoes sort of where my head was at in the comments that I made at our meeting last week, which is, and I, and I really like how you phrase that, is it's, a, it's not a destination, it's a process. Um, because I, I do think that that was, at least for me, you know, setting aside the specifics of the project, but the, the learning of the process and sort of the feedback that we've gotten outside of the actual listening sessions about how we went about this um, it, it is really powerful, I think, for, for setting the future and keeping this going, um, even, even throughout the summer and the fall before we even hear, right? So, because we're going to continue having conversations about this, I'm sure, um, and I think you know, not thinking about it is when is the right time and when should we be bringing the, and, and having, bringing the community in um, for these kinds of listening sessions, but sort of just going into it, planning for those, even when we don't think that there's actually a decision that has to be made. And I loved the, the framing that Bill Logan and Lorraine put into their report about thinking about the purpose and the timing of those. And I think mapping that out for, for the community when we, when we get into the process, I think will go a really long way to making it um, an engaging and um, actually enjoyable process for us to map out our vision for, for our kids in, in elementary schools. So. Thank you. Ms. Bitzer? Thank you. Um, I had it written down almost exactly what <laughs> Ms. McDonald said. I was, you know, how can we keep working on this, you know, for the next nine, nine months and making sure that even though um, we're making the vote today and, and my intention is to vote yes, I think we have heard loudly that there are still a small, but I think a segment of the uh, population who's not yet convinced that this is the best uh, proposal and they have concerns about it that go beyond, you know, kind of working at the details more fundamental. And I think if we don't continue to engage and continue to try to um, you know, keep pressing that we have a financial responsibility and I think a responsibility to our students and a responsibility to the community to make sure we take action on this, I think we, we you know, the schools can't wait because the, the conditions are just going to keep deteriorating. So um, whatever we can do to try to really make that consensus as broad as possible, um, I'm, I'm fully for working on that, um, though I would like to be able to spend some time working on issues beyond the school buildings. <laughs> and, and, you know, like what's actually taking place in those buildings is really important too. And it, the sooner we get moving on this, you know, hopefully the more we can focus on that too, because I think it's important. So thank you um, again for all the work you guys have done, and I'd like to thank this facilitator as well. So. Great. Thank you. Mr. Dunling? Yeah, I mean, I would echo everything everyone has just said, uh, and, and, and I would just take a minute to sort of uh, re restate, and it will be very brief, I promise you, <laughs> um, about, you know, just, because one thing I came out of the listening session, sessions from is, is or, or, well, two things, actually. One is uh, a near universal acceptance of the need for compromise, which is different than how will the compromise be implemented, but the need for compromise that I found very um, encouraging. 
but then uh, uh, the open question, uh, particularly from people who are still uh, working through whether this is something they could support, is well, why this proposal and, and why do we need to compromise? And you know, for me, it, it all centers around this concept that there's a serious <coughs> urgency to address both buildings as soon as possible without leaving one behind for 10 or more years. And, and for me, the detail in the statement of interest um, that was put together really underscores this. I, I find it really hard to read that level of detail in some spots. It's very sobering. And if I would recommend if anyone is still uh, evaluating that question of is there urgency to address both buildings as soon as possible to read that. And then ask yourself the question, is, is that state of affairs something you're comfortable with giving to Wildwood for 10 or more years? Um, and for me, it's, that's just a level of inequity I, I can't accept. I, I, I can't leave Wildwood behind. And I say Wildwood because in the statement of interest, Fort River is the prioritized building. Uh, and so sequential buildings would be one after the other. And best case scenario, about 10 years could be much longer. Um, and so that's that's really the one piece that is immovable for me, and I, th I think has been expressed here as well. Um, and so because of that, because that's the immovable piece, we need to compromise. Because I also think there's broad acceptance that no matter what, any what one person prefers, and that includes myself, and I've, I've said repeatedly, my, my personal preference is still the previous project. But I feel a, a, an obligation, a duty to model on the school committee letting go of my personal preference of what I feel is the best solution, because I have to acknowledge that large swaths of the community don't have that same personal preference. And I think you could say the same thing for any other personal preference uh, that has been expressed. Um, and so I think what the superintendent has proposed, one K-5-6 building with a small co cohort design that's built in, um, which is something we didn't have before, that addresses both as soon as possible, meets that requirement. and. Um, uh, I've, I've gotten some good feedback in the last few days about, you know, well, it, you know, supporting the compromise in principle, but the devil's in the details. Well, well you know, we're going to have to see how the public engagement process is and, and what the actual results uh, of the final building proposal. You know, to which I say, ab absolutely. Like, to, to support this compromise in principle for the school committee or the town council or in the public is, is not a, a promise or a commitment to vote a bond authorization or a debt exclusion override in the future when the time comes. You know, we, we still have to see... Um, that that process works out appropriately. You know, we, so I, I think the superintendent, the school committee, the future school building committee uh, will have to earn the public's uh, trust and, and show the commitment that what is produced is in, is in the spirit of, of that compromise. Um, and and I, I just wanted to, to close with one comment from the, from the teacher feedback um, that I, I thought really, just really encapsulates the spirit from a, a teacher from Wildwood. Uh, they say, uh, I appreciate the transparency my hope is that community members rally together for the greater good and not take anything personally. We can do better than 60-40. And, and I absolutely endorse that statement. So I'm, I'm very happy to support this tonight. Thank you, Mr. Dunling. Yeah, I would say I uh, completely echo and agree with everything that's been said um, by the other committee members tonight. And it wouldn't be a surprise. I think we've you know been talking again in so many meetings. Um, and I haven't heard anything you know, during the listening sessions and the emails and all of that, the conversations that I've had with folks um, around town that have dissuaded me from the need, both, you know, the urgent need to replace these buildings simultaneously um, and also the fact that, uh, you know, we have students and we have educators that are currently in these buildings that need something from us, they need action from us. Um, for me, it feels like an ethical responsibility that we have to move on this quickly. and. Um, I do hope that, you know, our continued listening actually does uh, help the community feel like, you know, they are, they are being listened to and their concerns are being listened to and they're legitimate concerns. I think it's very difficult for, for people to uh, imagine a town with, you know, um, just two elementary schools. Um, and I think it's also very difficult for people to, you know, imagine a uh, 600 uh, student building when their schools have, you know, have been smaller for at least a decade. Um, but I also understand that there's many members of the community that also feel very strongly in the opposite direction, who also feel that we have to take action quickly and that um, our children deserve walls and they deserve natural light. Um, and I completely agree with all of that. So. I am uh, heartened again by the fact that I heard so many people say that this felt like a reasonable compromise 
And uh, I had, my faith was a little shaken for a while there. Um, you know, I think, honestly, I think, um, you know, there, was, there seemed to be so much divisiveness and so much, uh, uh, you know, in some ways, anger and dissatisfaction uh, expressed. And this felt like a very different process. And it felt like, you know, the superintendent had listened to both sides, if you will, quote unquote, of, of the community. Um, it had come forth with something that felt reasonable and that also felt doable, right? And so that gives people hope because it makes them feel like they can actually move forward on something. So uh, I also, you know, plan to vote in favor of this. One thing that I would say is, you know, I completely agree with Ms. McDonald's uh, comments about the recommendations made by Bill Logue and, um, and uh, Ms. Delaporte. I think that, you know, the getting understanding or and helping the community understand when and how often to engage during a any kind of project is critically important for the success of that project right and there's so many different stakeholders here with different opinions and different reasons for engaging around this that we actually have to we have a responsibility to make sure that they are clearly uh, kept up to speed on, on what's happening and when and when their decisions will matter you know so that they don't feel like they have been uh, disenfranchised or disengaged and the other thing that I would mention is also that this came up repeatedly is the the lack of diversity that we have in these rooms and in these conversations um, and I think that you know there's it's it's challenging for me because I also recognize that this is a committee made of, of volunteers. Uh, we have a superintendent who is, you know, sort of spread thin among three different districts and who's doing a lot of other work. Um, and we don't have huge staff and we don't have a lot of means to be able to, you know, reach out to every single individual person. That said, I think that, you know, with smart planning, um, you know, and by taking advantage of every tool that we can for wide dissemination and, you know, reaching out uh, proactively and on, you know, on purpose, consciously <coughs> to different groups in, in the community will be critically important to make sure that we're hearing those voices. We had a community member at our last meeting who very explicitly stated, no one person of color can speak for every person of color, right? And that is absolutely the case. Um, and so we have a responsibility to make sure that we're reaching out to and attracting as many voices and diverse voices as we can during this process. But I think that, you know, given the steps that we've taken so far, the tone that we've set, and also what I've heard, um, that we can do that. So I, I have a lot of faith in our process moving forward, and hopefully the MSBA does as well, because ultimately that's what we're <laughs> aiming for, right? All of this means nothing if the MSBA doesn't accept our application, uh, and hopefully this year. And so I think now, you know, moving forward, um, after this vote, it goes to the next really big vote, which is our town council, right? And hopefully our town council has also been listening. They were in attendance at all of our listening sessions. It was an incredible show of, of participation um, and support for this community. And so I really hope that this conversation moving with them is also, uh, you know, as productive as we had hoped. So in any case, um, I, I don't know if there's any other last minute questions or comments uh, for Dr. Morris. But if not, I will take a motion. Mr. Dumling? I just wanted to briefly thank the superintendent and the facilities director for folding in all of the feedback that uh, that we sent them over the weekend. Um, so we got to review this. It's a very long document, a lot of details. Um, and, and I think a lot of, uh, you know, excellent, you know, and, uh, adjustments and improvements uh, were, were made. Um, it, was, it was one concern I had about knowing how fast this process was and how long of a document this was, whether we would have the opportunity to do that, and I feel like we have. And so I just wanted to thank them for that. Thank you. Mr. Nakajima? I'd like to move. Okay. Resolved, having convened in an open meeting on March 11, 2019, prior to the closing date, the Amherst School Committee, in accordance with its charter, bylaws, and ordinances, has voted to authorize the superintendent to submit to the Massachusetts School Building Authority the statement of interest dated March 11, 2019, for the Four River School located at 70 Southeast Street, which describes and explains the following deficiencies and the priority categories for which an application may be submitted to the Massachusetts School Building Authority in the future. Priority one, replacement or renovation of a building which is structurally unsound or otherwise in a condition, seriously jeopardizing the health and safety of school children where no alternatives exist. No alternative exists. Priority five, replacement, renovation, or modernization of school facility systems, such as roofs, windows, boilers, heating, and ventilation systems to increase energy conservation and decrease energy-related costs in a school facility. Priority seven, replacement of or addition to obsolete buildings in order to provide for a full range of programs 
consistent with state and approved local requirements, and hereby further specifically acknowledges that by submitting this statement of interest form, the Massachusetts School Building Authority in no way guarantees the acceptance or the approval of an application, the awarding of a grant or any other funding commitment from the Massachusetts School Building Authority, or commits the Amherst Public School District to filing an application for funding with the Massachusetts School Building Authority. Okay, we have a motion. This is for Fort River as a reminder. Do I have a second? Second. Ms. McDonald, any further questions or comments? All those in favor? Thank you, it's unanimous. I will take a motion for Wildwood. Uh -huh. Ms. Spitzer. Uh -huh. <coughs> um, I move <coughs> to, what should I say? Resolved, having convened an, an open meeting on March 11th, 2019, prior to the closing date, the Amherst School Committee, in accordance with its charter, bylaws, and ordinances, has voted to authorize the superintendent to submit to the Massachusetts School Building Authority the statement of interest dated March 11th, 2019, for the Wildwood School, located at 71 Strong Street, which describes and explains the following deficiencies and the priority categories for which an application may be submitted to the Massachusetts School Building Authority in the future. Priority one, replacement or renovation of a building which is structurally unsound or otherwise in a condition seriously jeopardizing the health and safety of school children where no alternative exists. Priority five, replacement, renovation, or modernization of school facility systems such as roofs, windows, boilers, heating and ventilation systems to increase energy conservation and decrease energy related costs in a school facility. Priority seven, replacement of or addition to obsolete buildings in order to provide for a full range of programs consistent with state and approved local requirements. And hereby further specifically acknowledges that by submitting the statement of interest form, the Massachusetts School Building Authority in no way guarantees the acceptance or the approval of an application, the awarding of a grant or any other funding commitment from the Massachusetts School Building Authority, or commits the Amherst Public School District to filing an application for funding with the Massachusetts School Building Authority. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. Dumling, thank you. Any other questions or comments on the motion regarding Wildwood? All those in favor? It is unanimous. Thank you very much. So, Dr. Morris, uh, can you walk the committee through what this technically, uh, what technically has to happen? Sure. So, the next steps are um, this topic will then go to the Amherst Town Council next Monday night. Um, they'll receive the documents that you have in front of you in terms of the statements of interest that have been voted. Um, I think it also is worthwhile sharing the um, full report from the consultant from Bill Logue because they were at, so present at the listening sessions. And, and the educator. Uh, including the educator feedback, thank you. Um, and which is very consistent with what's in the report, but I think yeah. the artifact, as to your point, um, the direct artifact is really helpful um, as well. And um, Mr. Ordonez and I have to figure out uh, what we're going to share with them um, next Monday night. They do plan to deliberate, they do plan to have public comment on the 18th. Um, and then they, their next meeting is April 1st, in which time they plan to vote. If they do vote in the affirmative, what will have to happen is Mr. Roy Clark will have some work to do on his end, um, and then the way it works is the chair of the school committee, myself, and then the town manager will, will do the official sign-offs, and it'll, uh, the report will electronically get whisked, whisked away to Boston. Um, December 11th of this calendar year is when they respond with uh, decisions, but they being, I'm sorry, the MSBA responds with decisions about acceptance into the core program. Um, and I think at a future meeting, I have some thoughts about, you know, a number of committee members talked about, you know, that's a long, whatever that is, eight months, um, nine months, and, and what can be done in, t in that time. And um, I do appreciate the lens of, like, let's also talk about what's happening right now in our school. So I have felt that. I'm sure we're not alone. Um, but um, that's sort of the next steps along the way. Great. Mr. Nakajima? Yeah, I was just going to um, thank, thank you. Um, I, in, unless the committee objects, I just wanted to say bluntly that sometimes when the superintendent or the chair uh, speaks for the committee, you might say, I think I can say for the committee X, or I think I can speak Y. 
And I know you say that a lot. <laughs> and I'm, unless the committee objects, I, I would prefer you be really declarative that all of us have said we're, we're fully, this committee is fully committed to continuing. Well, we voted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't mean the SOI. Mm. I know that. Yeah. Mm. What I'm saying is we all, because it's not really in the SOI, mm -hmm. that we're going to maintain a commitment to the sort of consensus mm -hmm. building community outreach mm -hmm. and engagement process. And, but I, I thought I heard unanimity from the committee, even though we didn't vote a resolution to that effect, I heard unanimity from the committee on that. And I'm, I'm hoping that if there are members of the town council that are wavering, hearing that not only are we really happy we did this, we've learned a lot from it, but also were we wanting to directly embed whatever improved version of this into our future work, including whatever we do between now and December, could actually help, can help Comfort? <laughs> Not a good word. I don't want to use the word convince. <laughs> but it might comfort them that that this that, that they're not that if they buy into this they're not going to regret it later by saying well then we walked away from you know what I mean mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and I just heard we I mean from the minutes and then from what everyone said tonight it just seems like there's unanimity on that yeah yeah, yeah I would agree with that thank you Mr Nakajima yeah I'm glad Mr Nakajima brought that up um, because I think sometimes chairs will very politely be very guarded in how they say the committee in general unless there was something specifically voted but i think in this case there's there's probably like, we wouldn't have to we don't have to iterate through them but things like you know the the need for compromise the the urgency to take care of both at the same time these are like and there's a half a dozen of themes that we've all very strongly stated that even though we haven't specifically uh res you know, have voted resolutions on them i think you can very comfortably and freely speak about the the committee's resolution on those items Thank you. We'll do that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you, Mr. Roy Clark, also yeah. for being here tonight and for all of your work on this uh, SOI. It is, as Mr. Dumling mentioned before, a very long <laughs> <laughs> document. So we have seen it. We appreciate it. Um, and I guess you have you like to make a statement or something. <laughs> I'd just like to thank all of you who uh, put in all the extra hours to uh, correct the errors and, and uh, refine the statement. I really appreciate your input and thanks for helping. Thank you. Okay, so um, all that, that was everything we had on the agenda for tonight. Um, I will take a motion. Mr. Nakajima? Move to adjourn. Do I have a second? A second. Ms. Spitzer, all those in favor? Thank you very much. We are adjourned. That was the end of this too. <laughs>